Cizor. I'm from France and uh, I'm 27 years old. And I made the film Après le Rouge, After the Red. Um, so the film is about uh, wildfires and a specific story. So it's, I mean, the film takes place in Corsica in a small village where happened a very big fire. And like three years after, I'm meeting the inhabitants there and we are seeing what is left. Hmm. Like in the landscapes, but also in their minds, what do they recall and where they are like now. How did you know about how did you know about the fire? So I searched on internet. So I was looking for different like fires, but mostly recent fires. And I was checking the stories, the news, and I found this particular village where like a very specific fire happened. So it was in winter, it was at night, and the story was very specific and it went like everywhere in the news in France. So it was a big story. So I went there and going there, I felt directly something special and something different from the other places I visited. Yeah. Like the fire happened like three years before, but you could still feel like very strongly that this place had had a fire. So like dead trees were everywhere. It was very dark. So my first impression was very strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I met the villagers, um, they had so many things to say. It was incredible. So I couldn't stop them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I went back and I met other villagers. And uh, so they kind of adopted me. And we were talking so much that, yeah, I decided to make the film there. It was It was clear that the story was specific and very, yeah, very special. How did you choose finally the three people that appear in the film? So like during, when we filmed uh, the project on the, on the set, uh, we spent like a week with them. And so I had more uh, characters and some of the story I had planned to film were not uh, as good like I could feel that some of the villagers like uh, had um, difficulties with the camera. So the choice came also naturally that some stories and some uh, persona like uh, wanted to talk. And so that's the one uh, we kept at the end. But also because we had also like more special moments with them and every testimony mm -hmm. is um, shows like a different um, uh, like place in the in um, like the the trauma you know like uh, they were a different place in that uh, way um, yeah. so it was also interesting to go from one to the other one and they would continue the story and they would express a different uh, memory and it would be more like uh, how it happened and more like how they felt. And that's how we chose. And I was wondering if you knew from the beginning that you wanted to be in front of the camera or not. Yeah, so it started with me uh, writing a voiceover Mm -hmm. um, because I had like, I do like to write in my projects and I was really, um, you know, taken in the story and I was also, that's why I kept, you know, the voice over because I had also personal memories to include and I thought it was a great way to introduce uh, the topic because I also focus, like I try to uh, talk about fire, but from 
a personal approach also. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me to start with that personal memory and go from that memory to uh, their memory, let's say. And so it's about uh, myself. So during the process, I, yeah, at one point I decided I wanted to be there, mm -hmm. but also because I was really um, like researching about trauma as well, like reflect, reflecting on that topic. And I was um, surprised that they were so open to talk about it. And I thought it was beautiful also to show more like conversation between two person and this passing you know, of stories and information. And I believe that also like maybe my age makes it interesting because I also wanted to show that I am very interested by this topic. And I think it's important to show that, you know, that maybe I'm not uh, in my life always um, surrounded by fire, but I think that I want to show that it's important and do something about it. So that's why I included myself in the yeah. image. Yeah, it was difficult. <laughs> Could imagine to be yeah. there and when you edit you know you, you see yourself and it's very intense <laughs> and so i did one so <laughs> maybe i will do it again i will see <laughs> <laughs> and then i was curious because i really like the way you filmed the book yeah okay yeah i wanted to know more about that so um so during the process I was taking a lot of pictures for the like yeah just the process of thinking what am I going to film how am I going to film it and I had these beautiful pictures of trees and I was interested by this the topic of the picture because for example for me when I see these dead trees I see sculptures mm -hmm. And because they are not my trees, you know, it's not my landscape that burned down. So I, I could see these sculptures and the inhabitants, they would say they look like ghosts or dead bodies, you know. Mm. So I was interested also by how um, the, repre re the representation of something yeah. can mean something else. Mm -hmm. And in the film, I... I start from, you know, a memory of a fire burning and how uh, not me mesmerizing, but how seductive it can be or like, you know, because it's from far away, it's in the night, it's, it's quite magic. And when you are in or when you are the victim of the fire, it's something you can't even describe because it's so terrifying. Yeah. So I like this. So I had this question in mind with the picture, like how it looks and what it does. And so I made this book uh, first also to create a conversation with the, with the people. Mm -hmm. So we would have an object to look also. And some pictures are from the inhabitants. So it was a link between them and me, uh, something to talk about. And I really wanted it to be in the film as well. So I keep it as a surprise, but yeah. <laughs> um, I was happy that it made sense, you know, in the process yeah, totally. and in the film. And I was wondering now if you could talk a little bit about your film school. Yeah. So I was uh, studying in Corsica. It's a one-year diploma. Uh, it's a, ma a master's degree which is um, like a meeting between the Grec in Paris, so like mm -hmm. a production company and association, helping um, people to make their first film mm -hmm. and also the Corsica region. Mm -hmm. So it's really the goal of the study is to spend one year focusing on writing, directing, but also producing. So it's very loaded with knowledge. <laughs> 
which uh, for me was amazing because I come from art school. So I also wanted to get more into like film writing and producing and all this stuff. So it was great. And then the second part is uh, more about the profession professionalism. professionalism. Yeah, exactly, yeah. thank you. Um, so the point, the goal is to make a film like you would do in the real world. So you start with like uh, the scenario, you film it the professional way, and then you uh, finish it with the editing, like the, yeah, the color grading, everything, the mix. So at the end you have like an almost professional film uh, uh, that you made as a student. So you get the diploma and you get the project. And for me, it was also a way to meet people of my profession in France mm -hmm. because I studied abroad. So I came back with the wish to make films, but <laughs> I also needed to meet the person to make film with. So sure. I think that's a great uh, opportunity. And yeah, the last uh, good point is that you are on an island, which offers like great landscapes and a very interesting story. Like uh, you get very inspired by everything. So for me, it was like the landscape, the language, uh, the colors of everything. It was just, I was, it was almost too much information, but uh, somehow you managed to, to make something. So yeah, and we were like 10 people studying together. So like small class. So yeah, you get to know each other. That's great. And the final question is, um, what does cinema mean for you? Mm. That's a difficult uh, question. <laughs> so, I know. Um, cinema, okay. So I come from like more like a art background or I studied mostly like art before and I got really into like uh, video art. And so slowly, I got more into cinema mm -hmm. um, and like for me, I do love cinema because it has also a connection with uh, so video art, so the moving image, but um, it offers like um, a focus on sensation and emotion and I feel like when I watch a film that I discover the world through another perspective than mine. And I feel that I get richer, you know? And I think that's what really appeals to me and why I can't stop watching films is that, that I learn so much and I feel like I understand more things. Yeah. So that's quite, um, important and I also love like the playfulness uh, in cinema as well like when I discover when I discovered the work of Agnès Varda for example yeah. it was it was unexpected for me like I didn't know cinema could be so free and she was making films but also installations and and for me, it really opened a door because I felt that what I wanted was possible somehow. Mm. And I love the way uh, she also creates like a bond with the spectator or something. So when I, when I discovered that type of cinema, I felt that I could make it because I was more doing experimental and uh, installations. So yeah.